and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be how I set up my tank for my new baby Northern Blue Tongue Skink Mowgli, as well as how I feed him, what I feed him, and a few fun facts about Northern Blue Tongue Skinks in general. I've been very excited to do this video, so let's get into it. So if you guys haven't seen my Reptile Expo video yet, I will put it down in the description for you if you'd like to check that out. But this is Mowgli. I got him from the Reptile Expo. Uh, when I got him, he was really, really gray, pretty small, honestly kind of skinny. You could see the two like bones near his hip back hips and his tail. He's got a nice big chunky tail now. He's pretty fat. <laughs> He's a big boy. And his colors are coming in really, really well. I will do a close-up of this in a second, but he has some really, really nice yellow bands right now. And when I got him, he was about a month old. I've had him for about a month, so he's around two months old now. Uh, of course, he has that, like, super bright blue tongue. So this is my handsome man close up. You can see his yellow bands. Really, really thick yellow bands. Um, they're getting really bright yellow, honestly. Every time I see him, they seem brighter to me. He's got those really dark brown stripes going down his body on both sides. He's got his little tan little bands on his fat little tail. A few interesting facts about blue tongue skinks are that northern blue tongue skinks are actually the largest species of the skinks. Uh, they can get about 18 to 24 inches at adult size. And they can live 15 to 20 years, possibly longer, in captivity. So blue tongue skinks specifically have become super, super popular in the pet trade because they're super, super docile. They're really friendly. I mean, Mowgli is still a baby, so he's still a little bit kind of going through his like little teenage phase where occasionally he'll hiss at me, but he won't ever show his tongue to me or anything. He just, if I'm trying to pick him up out of the cage, he'll get a little hissy, and then once I get him out, he's like, oh, okay, I'm not going to die. Cool. But especially when they're older, they get really, really docile. They love to be held, and when they do get held, they just kind of sit. I do highly recommend getting a blue tongue skink if anyone has ever wanted one and you're just like, oh, I don't know, do it. They're awesome. And they're really not that hard to take care of, especially northern blue tongue skinks. They don't need high humidity or anything. They do like to burrow, though, so I will go through some of the stuff that you would want to keep in the cage when I show you the tank setup. His tank is right there. We're going to get into that just in a second, but I just wanted to tell you guys before we do that, this is a 15 gallon tank when I got him when he was about a month old. He was actually a little bit smaller than this, but he's growing pretty fast. So I actually have a 20 long tank right next to it, which he will actually be moving into tomorrow. Um, just because he's a growing boy. Where are you going? Just because he's a growing boy and I would like to give him some of that extra space. Uh, but the footage I'm about to show you is me setting up a 15 gallon tank for him. So everything I'm going to show you is going into that 20 long. Just want to let you know. Alright, so this is the stuff that I got for my um, baby blue tongue skinks tank. We'll start off with the actual tank. It is an Aquion. It's supposed to be an aquarium, but as you guys probably know, you can use them for a terrarium as well. But it, this one is a 15 gallon. This is only because it's a baby and it's a bit of a grow out tank, but pretty much when I move out, he'll be moving into the 55 gallon I have for him. There is the lid, obviously, so he doesn't pop out, and so I have something to put the light on. Then we've got the light fixture, and as well as the light bulb. I'm using a 60 watt ceramic uh, bulb, just because they last a really long time, and I have a humongous window here that's always open, um, so he gets a ton of natural lighting. When he goes into the bigger tank, I am going to be upping the wattage, but this is just because it's a 15 gallon. So next is the hiding area. I got a really big piece of cork bark, um, which I'm just going to, you'll see how I put it, but I'm just going to put it kind of up like that so he can go on top of it if he wants to get closer to the light, as well as he'll have a lot of space to stay under it. And then we've got a dish for his food. We've got just a little water bowl. When he gets bigger and I get a, him into the bigger tank, I'm going to put in one of those uh, walking ramp ones because I really like those. It's easy for skinks to get in and out of there. And then this is just for me, for fun. He doesn't care if these are in there or not, but I like a little green. So we're going to 
put some green in there. And then for the substrate, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna mix three different kinds of substrate. We're gonna do some forest floor mixed with some eco earth as well as some repti bark. But I like all these three mixed together just because I want it to kind of uh, encourage him to dig and all that fun stuff. Let's set it up. All right, so first thing I do, especially with a brand new tank that I don't know who's been touching, pour a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol just to kill any bacteria or germs in here. Obviously, I don't do this if it's gonna be a fish tank. I just use water and scrub it real good, but since there's no water gonna be in here, it's just dirt and substrate and stuff like that. I always do this just because, again, I don't know who's been touching this when it was at the store. I don't want gross germs hurting my baby. I'm gonna add some dirt first. Woo, that's a lot of dirt. <laughs> So that's the setup. I really, really like it. Shout out to my dad. He gave me the idea of putting these, I forgot what the actual name is, but they're like black PVC pipes. He cut them to size and I have one right under there to hold up that area. Back here to hold up the back area. But um, I was pushing pretty good on there and it wasn't budging. So that should be secure enough for the little guy. And I like it because it's black so you can't really see it. So if anyone's in that same dilemma, suggest using that because they work very well. So that was his tank. Um, he has shed twice now since I've had him. Both excellent, excellent sheds. I haven't had to help him at all with his sheds. Nothing has been stuck to his toes. It's been, he's been doing really, really well. And he, he uh, poops like a champ, which anyone who has reptiles know that is always a great, great sign. But he's very energetic, but right now I think he's just waiting because I have to feed him. So since we're talking about feeding, let's get into feeding him and then I will talk to you more about the feeding. Okay, so this is only some of the stuff I feed Mowgli. Um, you do want to have a very varied diet uh, for skinks. They like to switch it up and they can eat a lot of stuff. They can also not eat certain things. So this is all the stuff that I'm going to be feeding him today. Um, but I do, I will recommend some other things that I do feed him some other days as well. So, first thing uh, for a base, I usually do Spot Farms. Um, it's, in a, it's a dehydrated dog food. It is kind of like a wet dog food, but not really. Uh, I'll show you guys, but you can add in water and it rehydrates, obviously. And it turns into kind of like a paste, almost like an oatmeal. You can make it as watery or as not watery as you want. I'm gonna show you the consistency I do, but this is the base I do. So this has chicken, it has some apples, it has blueberries, spinach, some sweet potato, and some carrots. So everything that a skink can eat. I also mix in some rapashi with it. Obviously, as you guys know, rapashi is for crested geckos, but you can also give it to the skinks. It does have a lot of nutritional value. It's got fruits, it's got um, insects. I also put in some bearded dragon bites. Again, says bearded dragon. You can use it for your skinks. They are kind of like little garbage disposals. It smells really good. I also put in at the top two different things. Today I'm going to be doing Flucker's medley treat. It has dehydrated crickets as well as some dehydrated mealworms that I just kind of break apart and put in there, mix it in. If I don't use this, then I will put in a can of snails, which you can get on Amazon. So I'll go with a natural balance dog food roll. This one is duck and turkey. So I'll either do that or I will do, do Merrick's wet dog food. This one is chunky colossal chicken dinner, grain free. And it's got chunks of chicken that I cut up and then I put gravy um, and mix it in there. I'm not gonna be using this one today uh, just because last time he ate he had a good amount of this so like I said I don't give too much wet dog food. So today I'm going to be using the natural balance rolls. For the vegetables, this is occasionally. Again, I don't, I use these maybe once a week when I feed him, um, but I do chop up bell peppers, um, just a little bit in there. I also do 
some sweet potatoes. Again, this is not in a frequently used thing. This is an occasional. What you want to use frequently is butternut squash. That should be pretty much every feeding. They love it. It's really good for them. But today we're going to use some sweet potatoes. We're also going to do some broccoli and carrot. And then we've got some organic spinach blend. Some other things that I'll use will be if I had eggs that morning, I'll save the eggshells, I'll crush that up and put it in there. Maybe I'll save some of the yolk, put a little bit of uh, raw yolk in there. So I have his bowl. I also have this bowl, which uh, is for my other blue tongue skink. It's my Indonesian blue tongue skink, Nira. Um, she is a rescue and I will be doing a video on just her. She's an adult and she's super, super cute. She has a lot of health issues though. I will be making one for Mowgli and one for Nira. So if you're wondering, hey, why are there two bowls? I have two skinks. All right, so we're going to need a knife as well as a spoon. So this is Mowgli's. chunks. soft but since I have it in the fridge it gets kind of hard. first and then we'll go watch Mowgli eat his. When I filmed that footage, um, I did find a new food that I really enjoy feeding him now. So I'm going to show you that really quick because I actually highly recommend this specific flavor and brand. It is actually a cat food, which I know a lot of you are like, hmm, cat food has too much protein for skinks. They don't need that much protein. That's why a lot of people like to use dog food because they have more vegetables and fruits along with it. But uh, this one, let me just show you. So this is the cat food. It's called Pure Bites. It is a wet cat food. It is one ingredient. Technically it's two, but they say one ingredient, but it's literally ingredients. Chicken breast and water. Looks like this inside. It's literally shredded chicken breast and water. Uh, if you open it, it smells like chicken breast and water. <laughs> There's a few different flavors of these, but it's tuna or shrimp or salmon or something like that. But he really, really likes chicken, so chicken it is. Blue tongue skinks need uh, a ratio of 50% vegetables, 40% protein, and 10% fruits. So 
This I just mix in with the, all the other things that I already showed you in the footage before this. I just mix this in with it. Um, it's a good extra source of protein. So I do feed Mowgli every other day. The day that he doesn't eat, I do give him some of those bearded dragon bites just for a little bit of a filler for a snack. But Nira, I feed every other day to every two days. She'll usually let me know if she's hungry or not. So I'm actually going to be posting the list I use to help me try to figure out what would be best to feed my blue tongue skinks in the description. So please go check that out. If you have any questions, it will tell you which foods you should feed frequently, what you should feed occasionally, and what you should never, ever, ever feed. So I'm going to end this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And... Please, please look out for the next one. It's going to be on my hamster cage, uh, Mochi. She got a new setup, so please look out for that one. It's going to be awesome. She's in a huge cage right now, and I'm really, really happy with it. Also, I'm going to be posting a little update video in a few days, um, just letting you know what's been going on, why I haven't been posting so frequently. Again, I'm going to end this video here because I keep rambling on about other things that I don't need to talk about. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I cannot wait to post the next one see what you guys think about the new hamster cage setup. I hope you guys have a great day, night, whenever you're watching this, and I will definitely see you in the next one. Bye!